Today is January 28th, 2022. This is Mordecai, host of the updates, bringing you your daily Elden Ring update. There is plenty of news about Elden Ring today. I know the Game Informer cover story is coming out later today, but I'm gonna cover that in the next update. Because one, we already have some news and this video would be very long otherwise, and two, it's coming out very late in the day and since it's 18 pages and Game Informer is also doing a bunch of Twitch stream Q&As along with more articles and footage, it's gonna take a bit to compile all that information. So I'll go over it in the next video which will come out a bit earlier than usual hopefully. So, busy weekend ahead. Anyway, let's go over what's happened in the last 24 hours. Firstly, we got a new Miyazaki interview, this time from PlayStation. Out of all the recent Miyazaki interviews, a lot of the questions and answers overlap, so I'm just gonna go over the new and interesting details. For one, he was asked which starting class he would recommend to newcomers, and he said it's entirely up to the player as it's an RPG but he strongly recommends against choosing the naked starting class, known as the Wretch, as it's the most difficult starting class. And that should sound familiar to all Souls fans, as it's basically the deprived class from old games, also known as Waste of Skin in Bloodborne, where you either start off at Soul Level 1 or Blood Level 4 with no armor. But it's nice to see that they gave it a new name again. Later in the interview, Miyazaki pleads that if possible, he wants new players to try to stay away from spoilers or guides and go in with a completely fresh and open mind. Which, after 600 days of talking about all things Elden Ring, I think it's a bit too late for that. But anyway, Miyazaki reiterates that they haven't intentionally tried to lower the game's difficulty, but he still thinks more people will finish it than their previous games citing that there are a lot of elements that will help people get through the game at a more leisurely pace. In terms of the actual game, he confirmed that it will have multiple endings, something corroborated by Kitao saying that you can 100% it in one single playthrough. Later on, he also talked about Godric the Grafted for a bit, saying that he's a prime example of how they take a heroic concept and twist it due to the power of the Elden Ring shards, as he says that Godric encompasses that feeling of sadness and frustration when a lord comes to the end of his reign, trying to cling desperately to the power he still has left. This isn't related to Elden Ring exactly, but Miyazaki was asked if he had played any new games recently. And he said that he played It Takes Two, the game that won Game of the Year. He played it with a friend and beat it in three sessions and had a great time, as it, quote, didn't let up throughout and it never let me get bored, end quote. And as someone who's also played the game myself back when it came out last year, I can attest to what Miyazaki is saying. I didn't like the story quite as much as A Way Out, their previous game, but I did find the minigames and level design in this one to be perfectly suited for co-op so I would definitely recommend it if you got a buddy to play it with. Anyway, the last thing in the interview is a question that asks Miyazaki whether he'd be open to collaborating with another influential creator, to which he responds by saying that he hasn't thought about it, but he doesn't think he would collab with another game creator. Rather, he'd be open to collaborating with another author, artist, or musician, as those are mediums with different styles than making video games. This would allow them a level of stimulation that's otherwise impossible to achieve on their own as game creators, Miyazaki says. So, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of Miyazaki's interview with PlayStation. In other news, it's Friday, which means we got a new tweet today from Elden Ring. And this one is quite mysterious, as it reads, Many great champions have accepted her gentle, final embrace, with this picture attached to it. It's unclear who this is exactly, I doubt it's Queen Marika as she appears too young. Rather, it's probably a finger maiden, who we know from Melina's dialogue to be those who serve the Two Fingers faction, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. She also appears to be dressed similarly to Melina, and we know Melina is pretending to be a maiden, so perhaps she's wearing similar clothing to fit the role. And this would be what an actual finger maiden wears. Accepting her embrace, as the tweet says, makes sense in this context, as we need finger maidens to turn rune fragments into strength and help us level up but I wouldn't be surprised if we find out soon enough what her true identity is from all the coverage we're gonna be getting. And finally, we got this new screenshot, which appears to be on the cover of the Japanese Elden Ring guidebook. Supposedly, it's a 200-page guidebook published by Katokawa, 
and in the description it says that they will explain areas of Limgrave, which you explore immediately after the starting area, the Stranded Graveyard, aka the localized Japanese name for Fringe Folk Heroes Grave, the tutorial area. The description also says it'll explain to you how to clear Stormvale Castle, the first legacy dungeon in the game. So if you're interested in that, you can pre-order it from Amazon as it comes out on the same day as Elden Ring. So yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the news in the last 24 hours. The Game Informer cover will be out soon, and I'll talk about all of that in the next update, so stay tuned. For now though, this has been your daily Elden Ring update for January 28th, 2022.